Hey guys, Mixed Media Girl here. So you guys asked for a video on the geode coasters and uh, the little geode necklace that I made. Um, so here we go. This is that video. Um, all right. So first, it's a little probably a little difficult to see what you're seeing here. Um, this is just a wood board. Ignore these little circles. Those are just screws in the wood board from before. Um, on top of it is a plastic cutting mat. It is kind of clear, so it's hard to see on top of the board. Um, but that's all it is. It's from the dollar store. comes in a pack of two. And then I've taped it down so that it is as flat as possible. First step is we're going to be using silicone. Now, this is not the silicone you use in acrylic pores. This is silicone from like Home Depot that you would use to like caulk your bathtub or something, <laughs> okay? Um, and this is 100% waterproof, 100% silicone. It's GE is the company. Um, yeah, so we are going to use this to create our molds. Um, and I'm going to start with, I'm just going to flip this around a little bit. Start with the coaster molds. So you can use any shape you want. That's what's cool about using the silicone. You kind of design your own. You can make them as quirky as you want. So this one make a bit of a different shape. And the perfect thing about this is scraggly walls fit in perfectly. So it's all good. All right, now we're gonna make a couple pendants down here. And same thing, I'm going to just make basically a smaller version of that. All right, I'm gonna go back to this first one and just make this wall a bit higher. Okay, our molds are ready to go. This stuff says it is 30 minutes water ready. We're gonna give it a few hours. Um, then we'll come back and we'll put our resin in and make our really cool designs, yeah. So we'll be back. Okay, we're back. It's been a few hours. Um, so we're gonna get started with our resin. The colors we're using are Illuminite, Violet and White, the Violet Translucent and White Opaque. And I'm using the Illumidust Interference Blue and Gold. Now the Interference Blue, I'm gonna show you because I know people are gonna ask. It's basically a kind of pearl color why it's called interference blue though is it gives that blue tint so there's ones that actually have like a green tint or a red tint um so in the light it it has that blue tint and just as another note these dyes are extremely um concentrated so this is one drop of the purple literally one drop and it just is crazy so here's what we're going to do. I like to kind of start from the outside and push the dye, push the resin in. I will show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna start here with the coasters. So I'm going along the outside here. And this is with that interference blue. So you'll see it's kind of pearly. All right, good. And next I'm gonna go in with the gold and I've done this both ways where you go in kind of circles or this way, which is where you kind of push those circles in. And that's a method I like to do. It just gives a really unique look. So I am once again going on the outside and it's basically going on top of that one and pushing that first layer in. 
You'll see what I, what I mean as I go along a little further. It's kind of a little hard to explain. And another note about the gold is it tends to sink a bit. So even if you think you're using quite a bit, you're probably not. All right, I'm going to go in here with the white. And that, I'm going to try to do a pretty thin line. Once again, going over the outside of that gold and kind of pushing it in. So, so far this silicone on this plastic seems to be holding up well. Hopefully I didn't just jinx it. We'll see how it releases. All right, this is the purple. And this is going to be the primary color. So it's also like take care to stay inside your silicone. Otherwise, when you go to peel it out, it makes it a lot more difficult. If you're actually going over your silicone. So this is a case of do your best to stay inside the lines. All right, there we go. So we're gonna come back to those. I'm gonna kind of let them do their thing. Let's go ahead and we're gonna work on these little guys. These little guys are a lot more difficult. I'm gonna skip the white on these and basically you try to pour as small amounts as you can. You want just like the thinnest of lines. So that's that interference. And then I'm gonna do the gold and I try to kind of pinch the cup. These are plastic cups though, so it breaks. Good, and then I'm gonna do the purple. And that will probably be it for this one. Okay, I'm actually gonna throw a little bit of the interference in the middle. All right, um, I'm going to do this a little different where I'm gonna do it where I pour in more of circles. So I'm putting this interference right in the middle and then I'm gonna go outside that with the gold. As little as I can. Good, and then I'm gonna go outside that with the purple. And you'll see there, it just gives you a different effect. I definitely love the outcome of both. Okay, that's quite a bit of purple. I still think it's gonna be pretty awesome. And then we have our last one here. Let's see, I think I'm gonna go a lot of gold and then purple. Trying to do less purple than on the last one because that was quite a bit. All right, we'll see how that comes out. It'll move. Um, so let's see, I do have a little bit more resin I'm going to go add a little more to these guys. Now you can also come back and clear coat these if you want them to be a little bit thicker. But since I have some resin, I'm just adding a little more in here. Trying to not mess up the design though. Okay, I think that's good. I'm actually going to leave it. I don't want to do anything else to that. Um, I am going to add a little more to this mid middle necklace one. It's a little too simple for me. <laughs> okay, add a little purple in the middle. 
And you can definitely add stones and whatnot to these. You just want to make sure that they get fully covered. Otherwise, they're kind of not super effective as coasters if they have parts that are sticking up or could harm you. <laughs> okay, good. Last step on this is to quickly torch these because we don't want any air bubbles. You can also use a heat gun. Now, especially if you're, if you have these on plastic wrap, you want to be extra careful because you don't want to melt the plastic wrap. But that's literally it. We're going to leave these. They are going to continue moving so they will not look like this when they're dry. They're going to keep moving. And then when they're dry, we'll come back and we'll, we'll peel it all off and see what we've got. All right, guys, so we're back. As you can see, these definitely shifted and this one leaked out a bit. So if you wanted to at this stage, you would put a clear coat over. I am not going to, so I'm just going to peel this off. Now, sometimes the silicone, depending on how thick you apply it, can still be a little wet underneath. This one was wet in like one spot. And let's see. Okay, this is interesting to know. All right, so while the silicone peeled off just fine, the resin, not so much. I'm gonna actually let these dry a little bit longer. I'm gonna see if they get, once they get a, a little more harder, if they're easier to peel off, because they actually, just peeling this off, it still feels a little bit tacky. So I'm thinking just letting them dry a little longer can help. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna even come back tomorrow. Okay, we're back. We're going to try this again. All right, much easier. I was a little worried. So this plastic mat is working beautifully. Peeled right off. Okay, good. Awesome. Now, you can wait until these are like super duper 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 cured. But I like to take them out at this stage when they have basically just cured to where they're no longer tacky, but they're still bendy. Um, because as you can see, we don't have like a clean edge here with that silicone. I've found it almost impossible to get a super clean edge. Um, so you can take a razor or whatever. I usually just get in there with some scissors and at this stage, it is very easy to clean up your edges. I'm just kind of cutting off any little excess parts. And um, yeah, this just makes it a lot easier. I'm also just kind of impatient with these things. So like the second it's ready to be taken out of the mold, I'm like, let's go, I wanna see what it looks like. All right, so I'm gonna basically just keep doing this on all the edges and then we'll see what they look like. And then we're gonna come back tomorrow when they are more cured cured and pretty hard and then we'll do the gold and that will be our final step so for right now just cleaning up the edges you can also wait until they are harder and sand the edges which is another thing I've done but for now this is just pretty easy <laughs> Okay, awesome. So those are now cleaned up on the edges. So at this stage, because they are still bendy, it is important to make sure that they are laid back down flat so that when they cure fully, they won't, you know, they'll cure flat because you want them flat. So we're gonna come back tomorrow and do our gold edges. 
All right, so these are at the stage where they're still bendy a little bit, but they are significantly harder. I cannot bend them like I bent them yesterday. So we're gonna go ahead and go on to the gold. And what I use is this, Martha Stewart Liquid Gilding. I have seen people use other things, um, you know, gold leaf or even just gold paint. This is what I like to use. All right, so we're just gonna take a little paintbrush and you can be as gentle or as rough on these as, edges as you want. Um, I'm usually not super duper perfect with it and I don't worry about it too much. Um, yeah, go as fast or as slow as you want. I usually do end up getting a little bit on the top. Like I said, I don't worry about it too much. Also, one thing is to make sure you don't get your finger in it and then touch it all over because it's pretty much impossible to get off. So we're just gonna go ahead and do this on all of these and then we'll see how they look. Okay guys, so that is it on these. The gold dries pretty quickly. Um, there you go. Kind of looks, these kind of look like eyes the way I did them. There's a million other things you can do. Uh, you can put stones in it. You can take a, a paint pen and draw lines. You can do a bazillion other things. I like it like this and that's generally how I leave it. Now in terms of these little guys, um, drilling a hole in resin is super easy. So you just drill a hole in it, you just put a jump ring and then you attach your chain and that's it. Uh, these are even good, I would, if you can, maybe make some little molds if you're doing a lot of resin projects and then if, you're, if you have resin left over from a project, you can just dump it into the molds and make these little necklaces. So that's a good idea. Um, and then this plastic mat so far worked the best. Okay. And I did try pretty much everything. I tried plastic wrap, painter's plastic. I tried parchment paper. I tried melamine. Um, I tried basically everything. And this plastic mat is perfect. Got two, got it from the dollar store, two for a dollar. Okay. So go pick up some of these. It's reusable. Like this will now last me forever to make a bazillion of these. And a few more notes about the coasters because I know I'm going to get these questions. Yes, you can set hot cups down on them. Um, if you set a cold cup down on them, they're not absorbed. They don't absorb. So if you set a cold cup, it's going to have moisture. If you set a hot cup, these are heat resistant up to like 500 degrees or something, this particular resin. Um, but you do need to make sure it's fully cured. So full cure time for these is actually 30 days, guys, not a couple days, even though it's hard now, full cure time is 30 days. So if you want to make these for, um, like maybe doing a craft fair in December or something, you need to start now. If you want to make these for Christmas gifts, you know, make them by the end of November so that by Christmas they're ready to go. That way someone doesn't take them home and set a hot cup on it and get a ring and be all sad. Um, yeah, and they're just awesome, really awesome gifts, awesome things to sell at a craft fair. I hope I answered all questions in this video, but if I didn't, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.